So while looking through Amazon, I actually ended up finding the cheapest Ryzen mini PC you can find in the entire site. And that is the Boss Game U32, which I'm guessing is called that because it is rocking a Ryzen 3 3200U. That is a two core, four thread, actually based on the original Zen architecture. So this is not Zen 2, this isn't Zen Plus, it is just the original Zen. For the absolute bottom of the product stack for the 3000 series, they were pretty much just reusing the original Zen architecture. So already since the invention of Ryzen, AMD has been using this tactic of using older nodes and older products to fill out the bottom of the stack. Something that pretty much for the most part has made Ryzen 3s irrelevant. With each proceeding generation, Ryzen 3 has been mentioned less and less and less. And it really just comes down to the fact that it is a lot of the times easier to use older products than to make absolutely new ones to fill up a segment that really doesn't have a lot of margin anyway. So it's going to be very interesting to see what an old Ryzen 3 ends up doing in 2023. I'm going in with some low expectations here. Now looking through the product manual, there was some very conflicting information because it was saying it was DDR4 2400 megahertz dual channel, but then it also mentioned DDR4 3200 megahertz, but then actually booting into the system itself, it tells, tells me it's running at single channel 2666. So very confusing all around there, but also a very disappointing memory configuration. Jumping into the actual hardware itself though, the chassis does not exactly feel very premium. It is very cheap feeling soft plastic in general it does not feel high quality i don't particularly like it but i don't think that it's the worst thing in the world in terms of the front io we are looking at two usb 3.0 ports with a usb c a headphone microphone jack and of course the power button decent enough configuration and i do welcome the usb c since it will let us use docs in terms of the back we are looking at two hdmis two usb the dc jack and of course an ethernet port in general not too bad overall what i do like is that on the side we also do get an sd card slot but unfortunately it is a micro sd card slot i wish it was a full-sized one that would have been very nice to see micro is fine enough because a lot of the times the devices that you will be using sd cards with will end up just being micro but if you're looking to transfer things from a camera or something like that it will prove to be a problem if we compare it to its closest price competitor that i own which is the gmk tech nook box g1 and that is rocking an intel n95 celeron processor the construction is nowhere near comparable the nook box feels significantly better in the hand the overall construction of it is just leagues better but one of its biggest downsides is that it does not have the USB-C present that the u32 here actually has in general though i do find that the gmk tech here feels like an overall better product in the hand and i trust its construction a lot more than the u32 here but of course let's jump right on in and actually take a look at some performance numbers now that we have the nook box right here since it is its closest price competitor let's see how they do compared to each other in cinebench and immediately things are looking awful for the ryzen 3 3200u it manages to score a multi-core score of 1983 which if we compare it to the intel n95 which is a four core four thread processor off of alder lake n we end up getting a score of 2722 so a pretty major difference between the two of these now it makes sense if you look at it from the fact that the intel n95 has four cores for actual full cores and its ipc is pretty much at the level of skylake while the 3200u only has two cores now it does have smt but smt is not going to make up for the fact that it is just not having these other two physical cores but we're also talking about original zen architecture ipc which is a lot more comparable to haswell than skylake so you can look at this as almost like looking at a comparison between a Haswell fourth generation Intel processor versus a sixth generation. And you can see it in the single core results where we actually end up getting a score of 8,029 on the Ryzen 3, while on the Intel N95, we ended up with a score of 919. 
16. So already things are looking pretty bad for our little system here. But one of its biggest saving graces is the fact that it actually does have a AMD based iGPU. And even though it's only three cores, it might just be able to beat the performance of what the N95 has. Now, interestingly enough, the N95 is only limited to single channel memory our u32 system right here is also configured to only be in single channel but it is upgradable to any memory configuration that you really want so we could upgrade this to a dual channel and we might do that later on to actually test its performance but let's take a look at how it actually performed in some games now immediately the first thing that i wanted to test was left for dead 2. Now, this is running with the lowest in-game graphics settings we are at the full 1080p resolution the overall performance wasn't remarkable considering just the fact that we had to lower everything down to its lowest settings and it is a pretty old source based game it runs usually pretty well in a lot of low-end systems but this is already teetering on the edge of playability at a very very aggressive graphics configuration but of course this is with single channel memory so if we upgraded to dual channel, there actually might be some performance on the table here, and we could see some improvements where we might actually be able to turn up some of the graphics settings. If we could do that and actually bring up those 1% lows a little bit just to be at at least above 60, then this would be an absolutely perfect experience, which is what I'm usually used to out of Left 4 Dead 2. But the fact that we had to get this aggressive with the settings pretty much tells me that we're going to be in for a very rough ride trying to see what this system can actually play it seems like the types of games that you're going to be relegated to playing is going to be mostly 2d type of games like gunpoint here where it really are not very graphically intensive and in general will not really be pushing the system very hard at all these types of games work perfectly fine on here as you would really expect them to but of course this isn't really what you guys want to see you want to see some heavier titles on here so let's see what this system can really do so as a bit of a torture test here we see mountain blade 2 banner lord running with the built-in benchmark at the its lowest in-game graphics setting you can see that the performance that we're getting here is pretty abysmal with our fps averages and one percent lows just hanging around in the teens just barely struggling to stay above single digits in general this is going to be a not playable experience any means whatsoever and it makes sense it's only three graphics cores here they are really being brought down especially by the fact that they can only run with that single channel memory i can't say i'm very surprised by this result but i know some of you guys are absolute sadist and you really want to see this system suffer so here is cyberpunk 2077 running with the built-in benchmark this is using fsr at the ultra performance preset with the lowest in-game graphics settings we are pretty much trying to give every advantage we could possibly give to this little system and it is just struggling through this canned benchmark here and if you look at the temperatures we're reaching here they are pretty high up there considering that this is only two cores and three gpu cores so the cooling system in this little system itself is actually not that great and it does get pretty loud almost any time that it puts any load onto the system itself. Though it does seem that its default 25 watt TDP is very welcome since the system is using it. Though in general you can see here that the biggest limiting factor is just the fact that the hardware that is in here is just extremely limited in 2023. But even with older titles, it's not exactly the most perfect experience. Here you're looking at the original Dead Space back from 2008. And I have to run this at its lowest in-game graphics settings to actually keep a consistent enough experience that is above 60. It's not exactly a great result for a game that is this outdated. So I really mean it when I say you're mostly going to be relegated to some extremely light 2D and very, very low quality 3D. Of course, here you can see Grid 2 running with its lowest in-game graphics settings. And again, we are not getting an above 60 FPS average experience here on a title that is pretty old at this point. 
So the hardware in this little system itself is extremely limited in 2023 if you're looking at playing any kind of heavy titles. Off of my initial impressions of using this system, it really is a tough sell at this point. What it really comes down to is whether or not I would recommend this system to anybody out there, and I think that for the vast majority of people, I would say no. I think that if you're looking for an office PC that you can just use every single day, I recommend getting the Xbox G1 one right here you're going to get a much better constructed system it's going to have a faster processor that is more efficient and overall this is going to be a much quieter system i really really like this gmk tech in comparison to this boss game system they're not even really that comparable the ryzen 3 certainly does have a better igpu but at the end of the day it isn't powerful enough to really give you a great result in even older titles so unless you're going to be doing some extremely light stuff if you need an emulation system then I would definitely go with this instead, especially since you can upgrade the RAM to actually improve your GPU performance. But out of the box, the Nook box is just going to be an overall better system for someone that just wants a computer that they can use for a really cheap price. This chip is just too old at this point to really have much of any relevancy in the market today. And if you can save $100 more, that pushes the budget of this system up into the 200 to 250 dollar range and at that point you're looking at systems that end up having six cores with smt and the gpu performance is significantly better than this overall so this system itself i just cannot recommend currently but we are going to be taking a look at how it performs in emulation and we are going to take a look at it upgraded so stay tuned for that i will catch you guys in the next one